What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this Troy build pole saw and the problem is it hasn't been used in a long time and now it won't start. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video we try and repair this pole saw, however it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours, we'll explore other options later in the video. The one great thing about trimmers that accept attachments is that one of those attachments can be a pole saw. That makes them extremely versatile and in my opinion very valuable. Now I'm not fond of this particular engine design because this design can be found in a lot of the affordable models like Bolin's and Remington. It's a very simple design without any innovations except for the jump start feature which can actually be a huge problem if there's a failure. If you're paying attention I'm kind of hinting to a future problem with this engine. Now I'm not sure how long this pole saw was in storage, but I do know it was working when it was put up, so I'm pretty certain it's not worn out. I'm also not sure if the fuel in the tank is from when it was stored, so I'll put some of my own fuel in the tank and try starting it. And since this engine has the jump start feature, I'm going to use it to help try and get it started. Just as a reminder, if the primer bulb doesn't fill up with fuel, then it's probably not going to start. Now at this point I may have flooded the engine so this time I'll move the choke to the run position and try starting it again. So we were able to get it to run for a second and that means the engine isn't worn out and that we do have spark. Now if it didn't run I would then use a spark checker to confirm that we have spark. You can find these online for a few dollars. Just install it in line with the spark plug, pull the rope a few times and watch for an orange glow in the tester. Now if it still didn't start then I would use a compression tester to find out if the engine is worn out. You can find these online for about $15 and all you have to do is remove the spark plug, screw the tester in the spark plug hole and pull the rope several times to get a pressure reading. We want to see a number well over 100 psi and if it's lower than that then it would show that the engine is beginning to wear out. Now since we know this engine isn't worn out, the next thing I want to do is remove the carburetor from the engine so we can inspect it for any problems. I'll start by removing the primer bulb section to look at the internal screen. We want to check and make sure that the internal screen isn't clogged with dirt or debris. So here's the screen. It's hard to tell that it's clogged since it's filled with fuel, but once it's out of the way, we can see that it isn't clogged with dirt, so it's good news. Now if yours is clogged, check to make sure that the fuel filter hasn't come off the line in the tank. Next, I want to check that the pumping diaphragm's two check valve flaps are flat and parallel with the rest of the diaphragm. Now, the easiest way is to look at it from the side. This one looks fine, so I'll reuse it, but if yours is bent away from the rest of the diaphragm, then I would consider getting a rebuilt kit, or the easier option would be to just replace the entire carburetor instead. Next, I want to examine the metering diaphragm under this silver plate. We want to make sure it's pliable and doesn't have any wrinkles. Well, the good news is it's still very pliable and the wrinkles are very minor. However, if you take a look at it from the side, we can see that it's kind of crooked. It might still work for a while, but I usually just replace them instead. After removing the diaphragm, I want to take out the needle and rocker arm assembly so that it can safely clean the carb with some cleaner. Just be careful as the parts are very small. If you lose them, you might as well replace the entire carburetor. The part you're most likely to lose is the spring, and if it does fly away, I would suggest using a magnet to help find it. Now, Once the needle has been removed, I'll fill the screen pocket with some fuel and see if it disappears through the screen. If yours doesn't disappear, then I would use some carb cleaner on the screen with some light agitation to help break up any varnish that may be on it. After that, try the test again. Now, Since our screen is clean, we'll put the needle and rocker arm assembly back onto the carburetor along with a new metering diaphragm. So this is the original diaphragm and as you can see it has four holes at the corners and two locating holes at the top. The other important part is the stem in the middle is the longer version so when you're looking for a replacement make sure you keep all these points in mind. I'll leave a link in the description for the one I'm using here. Another reason why this engine might not be starting is that the engine is worn out to a point there's simply not enough compression for the engine to start. The most likely reason for this to happen is a thin oil gas mixture. Make sure you follow the instructions on your bottle two cycle oil otherwise your engine won't last as long as it could. 
Now the primer bulb isn't cracked, but I do want to replace it so I don't have to worry about it later on. Primer bulbs like this one come in two different sizes. This is the larger one. However, if you compare it to the original one, you can see that it's a very slight size difference, but it should still work. I bought this primer bulb in a bulk buy, so it was very cheap, but if you buy a single, it might be about $5. So I removed the old fuel lines and they aren't terrible but they are showing some signs of hardening and deterioration, especially the darker fuel line. It usually never breaks but eventually it'll soften and collapse on itself. Now the line I'll be using is Tigon line and it's supposed to be more ethanol resistant. The fuel line size I'll be using is 3 16ths of an inch and the first line I'll be running is the fuel filter line. Now cut the line at an angle to help push it into the tank and then use some bent pliers to pull the line into the tank. Once enough line is pulled in, cut the angle piece off and install the filter. After pushing the filter into the tank, I'll run the return line. Now use the same method, except you don't have to cut the angle piece off. I usually push about half an inch to one inch into the tank, but you can push as much as you want into the tank, just so long as there's enough to keep the line from coming out of the tank. When installing the fuel lines, the filter line will go to the brass port closer to the bottom of the carburetor, while the return line will connect to the brass port closer to the primer bulb. So while pressing the primer bulb, fuel should come from the tank through the fuel filter line, then fill up the primer bulb. After that, it should then leave the carburetor through the return line and back to the tank. If your fuel comes from the tank through the return line first, stop pressing the bulb and swap the fuel lines on the brass ports. And if your primer bulb doesn't fill up with fuel, then you'll need to look at the carburetor for a problem. I'm having some problems getting it to start, so I'll use the jump starter. I'll also move the choke to the run position as well. So it's starting but it won't stay running and it's usually at this point that I would normally take out my carburetor adjusting tools to make a few adjustments, but that's when I notice a large oily mess on top of the fuel tank that wasn't there when I tried starting the engine. Now I will admit that the same type of oil was there before I filmed this repair and I thought it was just oily dirt stains from the fuel tank so I cleaned it up. However, I think it's actually a bigger problem than I thought it was. To get a better look, I'll take off the rear cover. So it looks like the leak is coming from the back of the engine where the jump starter engages the crank. If we take it off the engine, you can see that the journal is extended so the jump starter can engage it and I have to say it's a pretty smart design. Unfortunately, the bad part of the design is that it only uses two bolts to hold it to the engine. Why the engineers didn't use four bolts or even three bolts is curious. It looks like the two tiny bolts have backed out and the large o-ring isn't sealing the engine anymore so it's having a problem maintaining the correct air-fuel mixture. This is where things go terribly wrong. If you take a closer look at the bolt, you can see it's actually broken and it simply didn't just back out due to vibration. If you take a look at the threads in the engine, it looks like we have about two and a half turns available to use and that's simply not enough to keep them from backing out. As a test, I wanna put the whole thing back together and tighten the bolts down and see just how long it takes for the bolts to loosen up. I would use thread locker, but I don't think it'll work well with this thread count. Now while I was tuning this engine, it only took about 2 minutes of running for this engine to suddenly die because the bolts have backed out again. Although I do believe Threadlocker would have lasted longer than 2 minutes, it's by no means a permanent fix. So my question is, what should I do with this engine? Should I keep it around for spare parts or should I figure out a way to fix this engine? Now they still sell the block for this engine, but it's not cheap and it would take a lot of time to repair. 
Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.